Hi, I'm Colleen Campbell with the CBS 19 weather team. Welcome back to Surviving the Storm. I'll be talking to you about two destructive storms that often get confused with one another. We'll go over how each form and how to spot the differences between the two. But first, let's recap one important tool we use for forecasting. Just like your car needs a tune-up, so do the radars at the National Weather Service. The radar in Fort Worth is now back up and running following the completion of a two-week-long project known as the NextRad Service Life Extension Program. Technicians removed the radome from its tower to replace a few parts. What's a radome? If you ever notice a ladder-like tower that looks like it has a volleyball on top, you spotted a radome. The outer shell protects the radar from the weather, and it's usually made of a light material, like fiberglass. Inside the radar, is a dish that rotates at different angles capturing data. And what helps with that rotation is the pedestal it sits on. The pedestal and its gears were refurbished and replaced, completing the four-step process for better protection. Over East Texas, we have the benefit of having two overlapping beams at different heights to hopefully give us a good analysis of what is happening in those storms. So we can analyze trends and we can analyze severity. Meteorologist Jennifer Dunn is the warning coordinator at the Fort Worth office. Five radar sites cover East Texas. The Shreveport radar is closest, but having the Fort Worth office at peak performance is crucial when it comes to tracking those storms rolling in from the West. So we're very thankful to have our close partners within the broadcast media to help us really push and explain and amplify that message out because we know that that's usually the first source of information that a lot of residents turn to when they're looking to find out what is going on with the weather in their area. The now complete repair is one of many similar projects being done within the network of more than 150 operational radars across our country. Now that we know a little about the radar and its latest upgrades, let's talk about microbursts and tornadoes. The two powerful storms are capable of forming in a moment's notice. So that's why we always emphasize having a plan for your family when severe weather strikes. A tornado forms when warm, humid air at the surface rises and fuels our storm, while in the upper levels of the atmosphere, we have drier, cooler air also moving in, which creates a change in wind direction with heights. This is called wind shear. Those colliding winds begin to dance together, rotating, and creates a mesocyclone. This is when you may spot a wall cloud. If enough fuel, moisture, and energy continues to be supplied, that mesocyclone will continue to strengthen and elongate until it forms a tornado. A microburst is a little different. First, there is no rotation in a microburst, but it is often mistaken as a tornado because of how destructive they can be. It does start with the development of a strong thunderstorm and storms by nature build and mature until they collapse. Inside that storm cloud, you can find cold air, rain, and hail. When dry air mixes in, that speeds up the cooling process and eventually the updraft weakens and can no longer hold that core of cold air. So it comes crashing down, spreading out and all directions. Winds in a microburst can reach up to 100 miles per hour, which is equivalent to an EF1 tornado. But when surveying the damage, tornadoes leave a swirling pattern of debris scattered in all directions. While microbursts, everything is blown down in one direction. Finally, let's talk about one place where you should absolutely not be when severe weather strikes. If you are in a mobile home when severe weather threatens, you must seek shelter someplace else. Quiet weather days are perfect for practicing those drills. Let's go over the three-step plan suggested by the National Weather Service. Step one, make a habit each day to check your local weather forecast. Make a sheltering plan, including an evacuation route and how long it takes to arrive at your safe place. Beautiful sunny days are perfect for these reviews. Step two, on the day before severe weather, call your family and friends ahead of time to see if you could stay with them when storms threaten or find a community storm shelter available. Step three, on the day of severe weather when a tornado watch is issued, that is the time to take action. Do not wait for a tornado warning as it may be too dangerous to take your evacuation route. It is important you evacuate your mobile home before the storm hits. Even well-built manufactured homes can be destroyed if they become airborne. Stay with us. We'll be right back after the break, but first, here's another trivia question. 
This scale was revised in 2007, and it's what we use today to rate the intensity of a tornado. Is it the Enhanced Anometer Scale, the Modified Mercalli Intensity Scale, the Enhanced Fujita Scale, or the Saffir Simpson Scale? We'll give you the answer later on Surviving the Storm. Hey everyone, I'm Chandler Jordan, and I'm your Morning Loop Meteorologist. You know, it's been quite the whirlwind of weather we've had here in East Texas since I started in June. Uh, anywhere from heat warnings to severe thunderstorms to even a crazy week of winter weather. And it's everything that I signed up for and more when I decided to come to East Texas. I'm really looking forward to the severe weather season. We haven't had any tornadoes yet here in East Texas, but we all know that severe weather season is around the corner. So I'm truly excited and eager to learn more about severe weather season here and making sure that uh, all of us in the CBS 19 weather team are doing the best we can to protect you and your loved ones.